Okay, this is a video over our chapter 16, 17 review. We didn't have a chance in class to go over some of these questions. So I'll go ahead and outline how to do them. I will not uh, do the actual calculations, but we'll simply talk about how you should do this. So number 18, these are free response questions. Uh, we wanna draw a titration curve of a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. So <coughs> titration curves come in two varieties. Uh, this is the acidic titration curve, looks like an S. The basic titration curve looks like a Z, remember. Let's try that again. Apologize. Looks like a Z. So here you have the mill of OH minus added because you're adding an, a base to the acid, and this is the pH. Notice the pH goes up as you run the titration. Now, if you have yourself a weak acid, what you want to show is that the pH at the equivalence point, which is halfway through this vertical region, is basic. So you want to show 7 being a little below that. You want to show the uh, equivalence point pH being a, a basic. The reason it's basic, remember, is because you have a weak acid which, when neutralized, forms a conjugate base. Good? And this, by the way, is the equivalence point. If you had to do the opposite, um, if you had a weak base, <coughs> notice you start high with pH and then you go down as you add acid, so there'll be mill of H plus added as you go this way. And uh, your equivalence point is right here. So your equivalence point should be acidic. So seven would be something up here, somewhere up here. Good? Okay, take a look at some calculation questions on the second page. Number 19 asks how many milliliters of 0.0730 molar sodium hydroxide are required to titrate that many? What you want to find out is how many moles you have of these. Because to titrate, you want to essentially react all the moles of your acid with all of your base, which will equal the moles of base used. So the moles of acid, you can see, will equal the moles of base used. Once you have moles, then you can get the milliliters. Remember, molarity is moles over liters. You can solve for liters, which just move it to this side, move molarity here. You got moles over mol uh, Let's see, molarity. And once you got liters, convert to milliliters. So in other words, your moles of base will be here, which comes from your moles of acid. That's how much acid you have. That's how much base will be required. Now, as long as it's a one-to-one -one relationship, notice the H and the OH is a one-to-one -one relationship. If this were, say, calcium hydroxide, then you would need to multiply by two. That's the idea. All right? 20 says calculate the pH at the equivalence point of different uh, solutions. Now, the first solution is actually a strong acid solution. Know your seven strong acids. Since this is a strong acid, and we're putting a strong base against it, at the equivalence point, you'll have a pH of 7. No calculations necessary. You can explain it. I, was expla I would explain, you say, because strong acid versus strong base. Strong base. And that should do it. All right, however, if you have a weak acid, which is the case here, uh, the story gets a little more uh, involved. So first of all, once you titrate all of this, it becomes the conjugate base, which in this case is C2H3O2 minus acetate, acetic acids, as back in the, uh, on, the, on the stage. So you have to find out how much of this you have. Now, to find out how much we have, we can get moles. Let's find out the moles. And so moles is actually molarity times liters, which is actually 1.0 times 0.1, which is actually 0.1. So we have 0.1 moles. Now this is how much we begin with of the acid, but that's exactly how much we'll have of the conjugate once all of it is titrated, because each little amount becomes its conjugate. So we have 0.1 moles of the conjugate. Now, uh, so the question is this, what is the pH of a weak base solution? Since here, essentially, we end up with a weak base, we have to calculate the pH of a weak base. To get the pH of a weak base, you have to use the shortcut to the ice box, which is the, remember, the Kb times the concentration of it. So we need the concentration. The concentration, you have to divide by liters. Now, the liters that we've added was one liter of your acid that we had to begin with, plus we used the same molarity of sodium hydroxide, which means we used the same liters. Since the molarities are the same, you would use the same liters. If they weren't, you'd have to uh, calculate the moles and then see uh, how many liters you need to get one mole from this concentration. 
but because the liters are the same, we'll divide by two liters. Once you get this molarity, this would be your molarity, you'll plug that into here. And then don't forget the KB. Now the KB, you'll have to get the KB from the KA. Remember through KW, KW is KB times KA. So you have to solve for KB. Plug that into here. Once you get the square root, then you can negative log the concentration. This will give you pOH. Then subtract from 14, and voila, you can go home. This was a little bit involved, but try it. Uh, the answer sheet has the correct answer on, online. Let's try number 21. 21 says, What do you want to say? Ah, here it is. How many moles of sodium hypobromite should be added to one liter of hypobromous acid uh, to form a buffer solution of pH 9.29? So it's set enough to give us the Ka for a hypobromous acid. <clears throat> Essentially, we're using the buffer equation, which is pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. So, uh, sodium hypobromite is actually the base, so we're going to have to solve for this guy. And what we'll have to do is rearrange the equation. So, we know pH, that's given to us. We know pKa from the Ka, just negative log it, negative log, log. I apologize for the slight messiness. And then... Uh, we have to undo this. So we're going to move the pKa this way. So we'll do pH minus pKa will equal log of base over acid. Then to get rid of the log, remember this is, these are all base 10 logs because our base is 10. So you can raise 10 to that power, that get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it, rid it of it. And we're down to this. So we're down to an equation that says 10 raised to the power of pH minus pKa equals base over acid. We want to solve for base, so multiply the acid this way, and our final equation is acid times 10 to the pH minus pKa equals the base. Just make sure the acid is in moles, so get these moles into there, and then you'll find out moles of base. If they ask for grams, you can convert moles to grams. Not bad? And finally, 22. Now 22 um, is just a quick little non-calculation explanatory question. So here it says we have uh, two monoprotic acids and uh, well, they're titrated. The pH at the equivalence point for one acid is 8.8, .8, for the other acid is 7.9. Pick three indicators from the table on the right that should be used to titrate this. Now what you want to choose is the indicator that changes closest to your equivalence point pH. Because remember the equivalence point, if you take a look at the titration, it's a pretty broad range. You get a pretty good range. So if this is seven, for example. You go. You can go from about maybe five, roughly, to about nine, um, and still remain within that vertical region. Now it cuts it off a little bit. So I'd probably recommend going maybe from six and a half, or five and a half to about eight and a half or so. But since we're around eight, we're hovering between eight and nine. We can say so between eight and nine, we're hovering right here. So I could say we could probably take roughly this swash which gets us this indicator, this indicator, and this indicator is appropriate. So these are the indicators I would use. Uh, usually phenolphthalein, actually, this guy here, is used in all uh, of these types of uh, titrations, especially if you have a weak acid. Weak acids are co uh, commonly, especially acetic acid, weak acid like acetic, commonly use phenolphthalein because the acetic acid, remember, becomes sodium acid, which is a conjugate base, which changes pH in this basic range. All right, hopefully that makes sense. See you in class.